But you, you took Fryermuth here at 10-9. What do you think about that? The Muth. Uh, so I, I feel like f- for me, if I'm not going to be getting a tight end that is – uh, and I did forget all about Fryer Muth. If I'm not going to be getting a tight end that's one of those like top five, six guys, uh-huh. um, th- then then I really want to be in on one of two guys, Cole Komet or Pat Fryer Muth. <laughs> I really want, uh, I believe, just with their their ability to be large and obviously um, with the interesting passing games around them. And the fact that Fryer Muth was an absolute target hound around the, uh, around the goal zone. line. Yeah. That, yeah, and in the red zone. So – his ability to be able to make plays, he showed that off in a major way last year. So he's been showing off his, for years, showing off for years. <laughs> Penn State, relax, re, 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 relax, relax, happy yes. Valley. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. Relax. 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 Six to midnight. It's yeah. a fucking whiteout. <laughs> <laughs> All time leader in touchdowns in Penn State history for tight ends. <gasps> Stat of the yeah. day. Stat of the day. So, so he's a target. He's a target for me after those guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I like that. So and then the the top. Um, Tight ends being um, Mark Andrews, Kittle, Pitts, Kelsey, Schultz, Goddard. Uh, no, I'm probably not putting Schultz in that group and not because he's not good. It's not because he's not good. I think he's fine. I think he's good. And I like what he's going to be able to do, especially in a depleted passing game in Dallas. Mm. Dax back after his – I think last year was the first year after his whole leg issue, right? That was Last year was his yeah. first full season right, back. Right. I feel like he bounces back in a major way, but – uh, I don't put Schultz in that group. So I'm looking at Kelsey. I'm looking at Andrews, Pitts. I'm looking at uh, Waller and Kittle. Yeah, if I'm not getting one of those five. No. Um, then I'm okay waiting until the Cole Fryer Muth era. There. And so Hawkinson's out of that realm for you? Um, Hawkinson's fine, but I, I like – you talk You talk about let me let me upgrade you. Like the what happened in Detroit with, with the players. And, and, again, I know people are probably way over on DJ Chark. But, man, especially I think – being a being a reformed Jaguars fan <laughs> and seeing him play live here in Cincinnati before against the Bengals, that dude is good. Like yeah. he's le- like he's legitimately good, and he's not he's not what he was billed as out of college because I think he's a more complete player now. He's got he's he's been hitting the weight room like it, he's a much bigger, stout, all around better player now than he was when he was first coming out. So I really like what he can be in that offense. We saw Sun God go off uh, and be awesome last year. Uh, we've got Swift coming back. We've got Hawkinson coming back. I just don't know that I feel good about Hawkinson being someone that's yeah. going to drive targets on that team. That, that's don't all forget I about Jamison Williams coming in too. Yeah, yeah, and then Jam- well, yeah, when Jamo comes, come on, like that's that's yeah. a that you talk about pieces that you that are fun. That's a fun uh, group to have pieces of. But all that stuff does open up the the everything well, a- for the tight end. And golf is down to chuck it to the tight end. Well, and yeah, then for a-, a period there, he was. Wiling out last year. It's a good, it's a good old line, and it's going to be a. Hopefully, I think we're going to. We maybe we blossom into a decent little offense here. That's uh, fu- you know, pretty fun to watch. You, you heard what I said uh, last week. You did. He said top fifteen. Um, so you don't. You top fifteen for golf. You don't put Schultz in there, and you don't put. You had Goddard in there. No, I, 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 I just don't. I guess my question would be because I would throw it back to you, and now I would ask you this: yeah. Do you believe that either Schultz? Goddard or Hawkinson have the ability to like be one of those guys that lap the field at the position. Uh, yeah, for sure. All of them, or any of those guys. And I, I would, I would, I would say that one of those three guys is going to finish top four tight end this year. Okay. Um, so, so if you feel good about that, points then, then yes, I just, you know, Schultz, the, the only concern like in redraft, Schultz is gangbusters to me just for the volume PPR wise that he's going to get. I just the Gallup's going to miss limp into the season and we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We know if he's out there, G- Dak really likes him, but who else do they have? And he was, he was good last year. I don't, I don't, I, mean, I don't think Schultz is the caliber of player of Goddard or Hawkinson is, uh, but just, you know, volume wise, I am a little bit worried that he's not paid and, and could end up somewhere else. Now there's certainly some scenarios where he ends up at, in a place where he can catch somewhere in the vicinity of the volume that, that he could get now. But so I don't worry about Schultz for this year. Hawkinson, I could see in redraft, not being overly excited about for this coming year. I will say that uh, the tight ends coach, uh, I believe is now the offensive coordinator. That offense looks so different. 
uh, when they took when he took over calling plays, I think week nine or whatever it is, really when St. Brown emerged. So in reading just what Hawkinson has been up to and what that him and that I'm drawing a blank on the offensive coordinator of the Lions name right now. Um, but he's been around since they drafted Hawkinson. They've sat in the room together. He knows exactly how to use him, what to do, where to deploy him, all the different things that Hawkinson can do. So I think he's still going to be, you know, a pretty big feature of that offense that, you know, they're trying to get a deal done with him. I think Goddard's pretty special. Zach Ertz, I, I could maybe put in that threshold if if I miss out on all the guys that you were saying, because I, I, I agree with you when we're talking about where to take a tight end and redraft and really in dynasty, I guess. After I miss out on those top couple of guys, and, and I think I, I got it a little longer maybe than you do, maybe by two or three guys, because I will I would put maybe Goddard in the redraft and Schultz in the redraft, Hawkinson maybe borderline in redraft, but Dynasty for sure. Then I would probably throw Zach Ertz kind of floating in the middle, and then Komet and Fryermuth would probably be bookending that. And then after that, I'm I'm just gonna let it I'm gonna probably let it ride out. Yeah. Um, and maybe a little less on Fryermuth and redraft, but I do like Komet and redraft and Dynasty just to be the basically de facto wide receiver too for the Bears. Um, so after that, you know, I, I picked Fant in, at 14-7. Uh, maybe maybe I would try to double up on a tight end at the end there just to to, to put two on the team and try to find try to find one. Yeah. Uh, but or I could just be playing that that game and just be like half the league's punting on a tight end anyway. Um, and really the top four are probably going to be the only ones making differences in non-premium. So I guess wh- where and when to take a tight end, I think, I think that's a pretty good answer. Is anybody, anybody in on anybody have anything different or a different group of guys or a different strategy on the tight end position? I think I might have Ertz up in that tier pretty high up in that tier oh, with the, with the Schultzes and the Hawkins and the yeah. Goddards. I think he's, I mean, especially with Hopkins missing the first six games, Ertz, the Ertz could smash start the beginning of the year off with. I think I might have him up in that tier, maybe higher than in that tier than you do. Yeah, I mean, in in redraft, I mean, I I I can get down with it. They're missing Nuke. They they got rid of Kirk. Ertz was fantastic from day one in in Arizona last year. Yeah, um, as a mid season right. acquisition, which is and pretty wild. They re-signed him. Rondell Moore's. You know, we're hoping that we see him reemerge, kind of come back, and they they added Hollywood. So. You know they're they're kind of looking for targets too, so I think that's a good call. I kind of had him maybe floating in between those guys, but he he could definitely be up in there with those guys. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of good. Dec- I think I think the tight end options are the best they've been in a minute here, um, in 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 redraft and and dynasty really. Um, but I, I haven't really been too interested in Dawson Knox. Anybody got any persuasion for me one way or the other there? I think he's one That's you can not. add in that. I think he's one one of those guys that you can add in that group, though. And and even when we look at this mock, we see Schultz go at the six five. We see Hawkinson go at the six ten. Mm-hmm. The next tight end is Dallas Goddard, who I, I probably have at the top of that tier of those guys that I talked about. Mm-hmm. Goddard doesn't go until the eight ten, right? As the next tight end. So when we're talking about the sixth round versus the eighth eighth round, and even for for me, the wide receivers that are going in that area. I think I just prefer a lot of those guys, and, and I'm, I'm I'd be happy to get Goddard in the eighth if that if that's the case. But when you talk about Dawson Knox, again, if we're looking at Buffalo, if 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 what we believe about them is true, and Ken Dorsey doesn't shake the apple cart up too much about how they go about their business, they want to they want to get the ball in the air. He's a large target amongst a wide receiver core who is a lot of dwarfs, right? Uh, not really super duper small guys, but none of them are gargantuan except for Gabe Davis, right? right. Gabe Davis is a right. little bit bigger dude. So we're looking at him being a chief candidate to be able to do work in the red zone. Um, and in offense, it's going to be really good. We don't have questions about whether or not they're going to put up points or whether or not they're going to be able to play well. So I think that that boosts uh, what you hope for his ceiling to be. The question is, what's the baseline on a week-to-week basis? Right. Uh, I think we've seen him be, like you said, very good in in stretches of scoring touchdowns for that team. And then it it becomes really hard week in, week out to decide whether or not you can start him or not throughout the course of the season. So that's kind of why I've been kind of wavering on Dawson Knox. Now he's 25 years old. He's a little bit more in the wide receiver mold of tight ends, um, but he does give them a bigger body. So, uh, you know, I'm – I'm probably passing for the most part in redraft and, and really I haven't really taken too much of them in dynasty and, and that could be kind of come wrong. So who would be the stabs at tight end on the late rounds there for you guys? Irv. Irv Smith. Yep. Anybody else? 
I'm, can, I obviously took Fant, so that yeah. for me, that's a obviously it's not that sexy, but I th- I believe like Fant's got the ability of the Goddards, the Hawkinsons, and you know all those upper guys that we've mentioned. He just hasn't. He just got stuck in a shit situation in Denver, and now he just went to another one. But I think he could be kind of the 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 breakout star of that offense. You know, not not being great week in week out, but in the fourteenth round, could be a tight end that that I'd be. Uh, interested in, in snagging in a lot of drafts late. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I like the Fant pick, and then I don't know why Gasecki doesn't get as much love as some of these other guys. Like he he had a really decent year last year. Him and Tua have a connection. Uh, offensive coordinator, uh, head coach coming in from the Shanahan McVay tree, and they like you know Shanahan specifically. Like Kittle had pretty pretty you know Kittle's awesome if he could get in that Kittle role. I know Matt's a little concerned with. Gasecki having to block more, but I mean, they're going to, they got to utilize this man, his skills, and it's just going to be wide the fuck open in the middle of the field over there. Yeah. And he's on a one year deal. They're paying him 10 something million dollars. So, like, the, like, if I miss, I think that was good. That was a good point you made. A lot of decent tight ends to take this yeah. year. Like, if you miss on these top guys, you can take, you can still take Gasecki. You know, you can take Fan. You can take, and then, I'm going to be looking out for Njoku, like, early season dropped Njoku. Scoop that man up. I mean, I don't know if I want to hold Njoku waiting for Deshaun, but if Deshaun – I mean, can we just get some Deshaun news and tell us what's going to happen already? Like, Jesus, just tell us what's going to happen. Like, that's all – I don't – just, I just want to know what happens. Like, this is wild that we still don't know what's going to happen with Deshaun as of this recording, Tuesday night. Um because if he comes back, then I'm I like really want some Njoku, both Dynasty and Redraft. Obviously, more so Redra- or Dynasty because he's yeah. so young, and and eventually Deshaun will be back. Sure. But Redraft, you know, I could see him getting dropped by someone that picked him up and isn't loving it. But shit, maybe Brissett locks yeah. onto a tight end. I don't know. Who <laughs> man's gonna maybe they bring in Jimmy, and Jimmy likes to throw it to the tight end. I don't fucking know. Still could work out. He's a he's he's a a, a freak, and paid so i like taking in joku i like i like in joku i feel like joku was another guy that we really like coming out of college and went to bat for him in rookie Gazelle. drafts went to bat for him in rookie drafts and then when yoked when when Chief. drafts came around and startups came around couldn't get him because he was too expensive yeah, yeah. they just the hype went through the roof for what he could be as a 20 year old dude coming out i don't even know if he was 20 when he came out he might have been even a teen and he's like He's been in the league for fucking ever. Already hit the lows, and now he's red prime for a breakout at 24. When tight ends aren't even rounding into form yet. <laughs> he's 26, by the way. You got a you got a late round tight end if you miss on these guys that you're that you're going for. Uh, obviously, you said Friday Booth was kind of the yeah. middle of the road that you're looking for there. But I have I have one that I like a lot just to to uh, Njoku just for a moment. It's his sixth yeah. year in the league, I, so yeah. I, I feel like there were so many people who left him for dead last season because they drafted Harrison Bryant. Harrison Bryant flashed a couple things in a couple games and people I think were excited to be able to see what Harrison Bryant was going to do as the guy. Cleveland's not going to resign him. Well, Cleveland resigns him uh, <laughs> essentially and, and we're not getting any kind of wonderful words about Harrison Bryant here in the, in the off season or in training camp. So in uh, Joker wheels up, I, I do like that as a late option. One guy that wasn't even drafted in this fifth, or excuse me, 14 round mock. And this is what makes me regret taking Friar move because I would have loved Love to have get, gotten a Rashad White here or something of that nature. Oh, Hunter how Henry. Dare, how dare you? Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry. Didn't yeah. even go in this mock. And, that, and that's a great I'm, I'd love to get Hunter Henry and roll, roll him out there in that first week just to be able, because we have so many questions in that passing game in New England. Uh, but we know Hunter Henry was a guy who came on really well last season uh, and being the chief and, and kind of putting John, uh, John U. Smith to bed a little bit now. Not to say that John U. is not going to be able to so, show some resurgence this year, but Hunter Henry showed out last year. And I'd love to be able to have him instead of Friar Muth in the 10th, like get, get um, Hunter Henry there in the 14th and be able to have a lot more fun with those. Uh, middle to late round picks there. Yeah, you, you shit. You might be able to just, dra- you know, fuck, pick up Henry on the uh, waivers there. I mean, yeah, might not even need to draft a yeah, tight end. F- figure out which guy is a uh, figure out which guy is the guy versus Johnny versus Henry, and then. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think. It, I think Henry established himself, but it's a good call. Johnny got a little bit of buzz, and I think he's getting paid more. But 
who's out there catching balls. It was Henry. Henry was, Henry was good. So that's a good call. Tunyon, a- another one for me. Bobby yes. T, back off the pup. Yes. Uh, back off the pup, and they need it. They need him. They, him and Rodgers had a connection at one point. It wasn't, it wasn't really showing up last year, then he got hurt. But I think maybe you could see a little resurgence. Maybe not right off the rip, but uh, – Watch out for my week one Higby. He loves week one Higby, this guy over here. 